I am applying for my release from the asylum in order to live once again among civilized people and at home with my wife. It is therefore necessary for me to explain my recent spiritual revelations so that you may have some understanding of the oddities of my behavior. I cannot, of course, count upon being fully understood as so much that I have learned exceeds human understanding and indeed cannot be expressed in spoken language. But of one thing I am certain. I have come infinitely closer to the truth than those who have not received divine revelation. We must reconcile ourselves to the fact that things exist beyond our comprehension. Weather's changed. The years with my wife had been, on the whole, quite happy ones, rich in outward honors and marred only by the repeated disappointment in our hope of being blessed with children. Six fetuses miscarried or stillborn. I became aware of a desire which, upon reflection, struck me as highly peculiar. How pleasant to be a woman succumbing to intercourse. Uh, 
Another honor has been bestowed upon me. In the same year, I was appointed Zenot's president to the Superior Court in Dresden. In autumn, I took up office. After only a few weeks, I was already overtaxing myself mentally. I remember that in March of 1894, when communication with supernatural powers was already well underway, I read my own obituary notice in the morning paper. Henri de Betoncourt, noted lepidopterous. He lived a long life. At night, I became aware of a crackling noise in the wall of our bedroom. I now see these instances, called interferences by the voices that talk to me, as divine miracles. As well as spoken language, there is a nerve language of which common humanity is unaware. Flexig advised my admission to his nerve clinic in Leipzig. I presume the professor has some recollection of what occurred during my stay there. remedied. Herr Schreber, these are your quarters. I hope they are to your liking. Return my husband soon, please. We are to start with them. I intend to make his stay brief and his cure complete. Daniel Paul Schreber, Senate's president at the Dresden Superior State Court, admitted to my care at the psychiatric clinic at the University of Leipzig for the treatment of acute insomnia and a slightly unstable state of mind. Straighten your back. Straighten your back, sir, please. Patient's birth. July 25th, 1842, religion Lutheran, family status married, no children. Initial observations. Physical condition good, although demeanor somewhat uh, melancholy. Beads of sweat form continuously on his brow. Sp 
speech is impaired. Treatment, bed rest, tepid baths, administer opium four times daily. Herr Schreiber! Apart from sad memories of my wife, who was much of my mind at the time, I had the sensation of a painless and peaceful passing away. At this point in Schreber's treatment, we see fit to allow him to breathe fresh air and interact with other patients. While at Flexig's asylum, I became acquainted with the rays. affects us all. Indeed. Divine rays influence the nerves. This nerve language is akin to the process by which a person tries to imprint certain words in his memory. Yes, I know how the memory works. That art in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy name. Normally, the nerve language affects only the person involved in the act of memorization. In my case, there is no respite. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Beyond voluntas tua. Here at Flexix, we believe that mental health develops along with physical health. Let's go to the gymnasium, shall we? Very good. Now, let's start with something simple. Arms out front. And bend. At the knees. Up. Bend. Good. And up. Down. And up. And down, and up, down, up, Schreber, and down, and up, and down, and up. Return.
outbursts cannot be tolerated here at Flexix. If they continue, we will have to intensify your treatment. Do not destroy the people. You wish me harm. Nonsense. I'm trying to make you well. You speak the nerve language and you're trying to stop me. Make a fist. Is this cyanide? Of course not. I am a seer of spirits. I communicate with souls. Father? A child enters this world. Raw, undeveloped, but equipped with seeds for all around development. These seeds are organic, spiritual in nature. Inferior are the organic seeds, for they lead to the degeneration of the body and the mind. These are the seeds of disease and of death. Precious are the spiritual seeds. They promote mental health and beauty. These are the seeds of life. The reciprocal influence of body and soul necessitates the close relationship between morality and hygiene. Leipzig, and preeminent propagator of childhood health and hygiene. Suffered from obsessional ideas, attacks of melancholy, and homicidal tendencies. Mother. Suffered from nervousness and mood swings. One sister. Hysterical. One female cousin. Presently held at Leipzig Hospital due to chronic paranoia. One brother paretic, dead by suicide. The study of all mental processes, both healthy and pathological, must be pursued in light of many factors. Physiological functions, previous injuries and illnesses, but also hereditary predisposition. connections you try to make between my family and my understanding of nerve language are false. Your reasoning specious. What is this nerve language? You use it as you watch me when I take my tepid baths. We have an attendant watch the patients to prevent them from drowning. You remember. How could I recall one of your hallucinations? Well, how does lying to a patient aid his recovery? Do you think I am trying to hinder your recovery? I would describe your method as a vacillation. A vacillation? It seems as if you were trying to bury me alive and at the same time tear me open. Go on. Why? Let's talk about your wife's miscarriages. Oh, is this to cure me or my wife? Lights out.
The brain is the organ of the soul. Therefore, in mental illness, where the stimulation of the psychological and spiritual centers is abnormally high, and the nerve carriers of memory paths are unusually easy to agitate, bodily sensations can be horrifying. Terrible and dramatically violent images are produced by a pathologically heightened feeling of fear. This fear then manifests itself in the actions of the diseased person. Feeding on everything that is preserved in memory while simultaneously generating unimaginable hallucinations and delusions. Flexig maintained nerve contact in such a way that he spoke to me without being present. At this point in Schraber's treatment, we have seen fit to provide him the means to collect his innermost thoughts so that we can glean greater insight into these desires. My hands are led automatically by passing rays, giving human shapes to distant celestial bodies. I am one in the list of many, I know! Ashraver, you must be quiet! Should the maid of Orléans be silent? Jesus Christ, should he have been silent? These outbursts must stop. God is composed of nerves, not body, and is therefore akin to the human soul. Would you like me to take away your scribble book? I'm increasing your sedation. Potassium bromide should shut you up. You sedate the brain. You cannot sedate the soul. My dear, you do not look so well. 
I used to look well. Dr. Flexik says he will have to increase your medication if you do not heed his directives. He is a thief. He's a doctor. Do you feel the sun's rays warming the winter air? They tell me of a blessed future. So, his condition has improved, wouldn't you say? He has not improved. He's taken a step back. From your medication, perhaps. I don't wish to medicate him. His behavior must be normalized. Doctor, what is in that journal of his? Just ramblings. I have allowed him to keep it to himself. May I see it? It's simply the scribblings of a highly agitated imagination. I would still like to see it. Unfortunately, it is the property of my institution. For the love of God! Do not destroy me because of what we are. What are we? Bound. Stars are missing from the sky. Show me. We can form the constellations. The states of blessedness. We can put them in order. I have it. What do you have? May I look? I'd rather you didn't. It will help us understand. Well, you already understand. If I did, you would be home. I don't think so. Why would I want you to stay? Because I fascinate you. God has granted those engaged in the study of nervous disorders with divine nerves. Yet Professor Flexig abused this gift, attempting to supersede God's nerve contact with me.
Return that to me. What is the meaning of this? Take this ridiculous thing off me at once! Flexing! Come with me! Calm down, sir. You cannot do this! I am not a lunatic! Flexing! I am the chief judge of Saxony. placed him in a situation where I can more closely examine requires the most precise touch. No interaction with a human being is ever simple. <laughs> Nerves carrying sensual urges enter the cerebral cortex. Nothing more than a simple mechanical process of the brain. In contact with Professor Flexig's nerves, I constantly demanded cyanide in order to poison myself.
Did you notice that lesion? I am the first leper corpse. First, I am the leper corpse. Leper corpse, I am the first. Corpse, I am the first leper. The notion of the leper localization the of God corpse. in the body is not only heretical, but scientifically impossible. God still in silent peace. The peace life never giveth, nor worldly joys beneath. It needs God's arm to strike a blow and wound you deep, so that you cry, have mercy. God, have mercy on my days. It needs a cry must ring. There is safety only in death. Behave like a corpse. Like a corpse? What of the rays? The nerves? Venom juice. The lesion is healed. Celestial bodies have been misplaced. Has someone stolen them? Not really. What kinds of bodies? Luminous hot gases, held together by their own gravity. Stars? Among other things. And where have they been misplaced? There. The so-called feeding system was instituted. The voices reiterated that it was my duty to sacrifice myself for God. Nightly, I would envision the end of the world as a consequence of the strength of my connection with God. Birds contain remnants of blessed human souls. At times, they assume a human shape. I have seen things which prove that those fairy tale will o' the wisps or departed souls actually exist. The souls of heretics preserved for centuries under glass in medieval cloisters, announced their survival by a vibration, a monotonous and doleful humming noise. I had Professor Flexig's soul stuffed into my body. It was like a large ball of wadding or cobweb miraculously thrust into my belly. Attempts were made to pull the nerves out of my head. My skull was repeatedly split open. My spinal cord, little men attempted to pump it out. The conflict between Professor Flexig and myself threatened the very existence of God. Terror and fear spread amongst the German people, destroying the basis of religion. Devastating epidemics, leprosy and plague broke out among mankind. The 
German people can no longer be God's chosen people unless a champion appears who can prove their continued worth. The human race will be renewed. A new race shall rise from the spirit of Schreber. Bear in mind that God resides in your body and that this holy temple should at all times be spared desecration. Purification will lead to the state of blessedness. This consists of uninterrupted discipline combined with the contemplation of God. Never forget the basic language! Yes! Yes! true sense of direction only when permeated by a pure and true love. Reward for punishment. Reward for punishment. Reward for punishment. Take him back to his room. Give it to him. Rubbish. Daniel. Daniel, talk to me. I want you to leave here, but I need to find out what is going on. You are making some notes of your stay. May I look? You do wish to leave here. A 
asylums are God's nerve institutes. Have you no desire to come home? This is my home. I have missed you very much. There is a tendency to unman a human who has entered into permanent contact with the rays.
Come in, Doctor. Good morning. Good morning. I would like you to examine me. The hair came off my body naturally. Anxiety can cause this. My breast. It has the identical shape and function as my mother's. There is no change. You could nurse a child from it. Touch it. Examine it. Take photographs. Am I more lovely than Zabina? Thank you. Have you kissed me? Thank you. Is this what you wish to see? Thank you. In certain advanced forms of mental disease, we see in addition to an exhaustion of the brain, a strong irritation in the sex organs. A pathological sexual excitement, if you will, ignited by lurid delusions and hallucinations. The affected person loses his ability to perceive his own environment in any other way than as filtered through his own spontaneous and uncontrollable urges of passion. He loses self-awareness. He forgets his own gender. The patient, then fearing his own impending sexual destruction, imagines supernatural powers, metaphysical processes, and sexual deviance in the thoroughly healthy people whom he encounters. He is beyond my grasp.
you need to prepare yourself. What you are about to see will be extremely shocking. More shocking than when you put him in that dungeon? His disease has progressed to a highly degenerate level. After you see him, we can consider some severe steps. Severe steps? Even more intense and constant medication. Dissection, perhaps. Let me see his condition. Zabina? Zabina? Daniel, what has happened to you? If God has spoken, must you listen? Is that why you are dressed like this? Are you an apparition? My wife is dead. My memoirs will one day become an important source of information about the structure of an entire new religious system. Schreiber writes constantly, sketching and scrawling his delusions. Looking at nudes in illustrated magazines and, and drawing them. What I have glimpsed is pornographic, aberrant, and inhuman. He is an obscene example of precisely what I have struggled to codify and eradicate. The signs of transformation into a woman became so marked on my body that I could no longer ignore the goal at which my entire development was aiming. Fertilization by divine rays for the purpose of creating new human beings. You were aware? Yes. Germany will take a distinctly vile course unless something is done. Who is to be the vessel for this? I don't know. Who has the divine miracle of God's nerves in his body? I do. Something like the conception of Jesus Christ by the Immaculate Virgin occurred. By a divine miracle, God's nerves had been sown within me. There was a quickening of the first signs of life.
colonization had occurred. The time has come for me to leave. You belong here. My work is complete. Mine is not. On the contrary. You've no idea of your success. I am your creation, Doctor. I am applying for my release from the asylum in order to live once again among civilized people and at home with my wife. It is therefore necessary for me to explain my recent spiritual revelations so that you may have some understanding of the oddities of my behavior. I cannot, of course, count upon being fully understood as so much that I have learned exceeds human understanding and indeed cannot be expressed in spoken language. But of one thing I am certain. I have come infinitely closer to the truth than those who have not received divine revelation. exist beyond our comprehension. The years with my wife had been, on the whole, quite happy ones, rich in outward honors and marred only by the repeated disappointment in our hope of being blessed with children. Six fetuses miscarried or stillborn. I became aware of a desire which, upon reflection, struck me as highly peculiar. How pleasant to be a woman succumbing to intercourse. In the same year, I was appointed Zenot's president to the Superior Court in Dresden. In autumn, I took up office. After only a few weeks, I was already overtaxing myself mentally. I remember that in March of 1894, when communication with supernatural powers was already well underway, I read my own obituary notice in the morning paper. At night, I became aware of a crackling noise in the wall of our bedroom. I now see these instances, called interferences by the voices that talk to me, as divine miracles. As well as spoken language, there is a nerve language of which common humanity is unaware. <laughs> Professor Flexig advised my admission to his nerve clinic in Leipzig. I presume the professor has some recollection of what occurred during my stay there. The state maintains that the most important criteria in judging the capacity of the patient is his ability to look after his own affairs. I offer the court the patient's journal entitled Memoirs of My Nervous Illness, which he has seen fit to submit as evidence of his lucidity when one looks at the contents of his writings and takes into consideration the abundance of indiscretions relating to himself and others, the unembarrassed detailing of the most doubtful, even impossible situations and events, the use of the most offensive language, there can be no doubt of his mental derangement. My journal cannot simply be dismissed as the empty fantasy of a muddled mind. It's true that I use strong language occasionally, but my memoirs are not written for high school girls. I have been granted unprecedented insight into divine matters. I have glimpsed behind the dark veil which hides the beyond from the eyes of man.
child enters this world raw, undeveloped, but equipped with seeds for all around development. Regardless of religious affiliation, are aware of powers greater than man. Connections between nature and the divine have been explored since ancient times. The true thinker, the sacrificial lamb, must be willing to open himself fully. For a period of time, I had no fear, but I have had to pay dearly for this insight. I am cognizant of my journey. I am aware that most, given a choice, would not have taken it. I have ventured into the preternatural, but am more than capable of dealing with the physical. And my so-called delusions are concerned solely with God. They have no influence on my behavior in any worldly matter. It is statements such as these confirmed by the medical reports submitted by the renowned neurologist, Professor Flexig, that leave no other decision but to maintain the plaintiff's tutelage at the Leipzig Nerve Clinic. Under what circumstances can a person be considered insane? The expert's report diagnoses paranoia. This is a blow in the face of truth. I do not deny that my nervous system has for some time been in a pathological condition, but I deny absolutely that I am or ever have been mentally ill. My mind is as clear and healthy as any person's. Who of my standing would not feel it an indignity to be treated like a child? Contact with the outside world is curtailed. I am denied details about my financial affairs. My every move is monitored and noted. This is not about cure, but confinement. My demand is to be freed from this diabolical and illegal tutelage. Herr Schreber has the sincere wish to resume domestic union with his wife and to live in the seclusion of a county seat for the rest of his days. The plaintiff's uh, peculiar belief in miracles, although forming the basis of his mental life, does not deprive him of the capacity to manage the affairs of life. The Court of Appeals has arrived at the opinion that the plaintiff, Daniel Paul Schreber, is capable of dealing with the demands of life in all spheres. And the order of incarceration imposed upon this plaintiff is hereby rescinded. Dear Professor, I take the liberty of enclosing a copy of my book, Memoirs of My Nervous Illness. You will find your name mentioned frequently. I beg you to examine it in a kindly spirit. It is far from me to attack your honor, and indeed I harbor no personal grievance against you. My sole aim is to further knowledge in a vital field that of religion. I do not wish to cast any shadow upon your person. Like so many doctors, you could not completely resist the temptation of using a patient as an object for scientific experiments. I beg you, therefore, my dear sir, 
I might almost say I implore you to state without reservation one, whether during my stay in your asylum you maintained hypnotic contact with my nervous system. Two, whether you witnessed communications from voices originating elsewhere which indicated supernatural origin. And finally, whether you yourself received any visions which dealt with the almighty power of God. In appealing to your integrity as a scientist, I trust that you will have the courage to acknowledge the truth. I have thought fit to use this letter as the preface to my memoirs. Yours sincerely, Dr. Schreber, Zinat's president, retired.